Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and Ledger has just announced a major shift that is literally redefining the way we secure and control our digital lives. A whole new era is beginning, and it starts with one huge mindset change. Ledger devices are no longer being called hardware wallets. They're now officially called signers. Why? Because they don't store your crypto. They prove your ownership and your digital identity. They can securely sign every transaction you make online, safely, offline, with clear signing so there's no room for blind trust. Ledger signers are part of a much bigger vision now. Full digital ownership, not just asset custody. They're also renaming Ledger Live. It's now called Ledger Wallet, your all-in-one control center, where you can safely buy, sell, stake, swap, send, and receive everything, all in one secure hub. In addition to that, a Ledger signer can be used as a hardware two-factor authentication device. It can also be used as a hardware passkey with many online services. So now you can use your Ledger signer to secure your entire digital life. Uh, they've also announced this new Ledger signer, the Ledger Nano G5, which comes in at $179. Um, so finally, we have uh, the, a Ledger Nano generation that comes with a touchscreen at uh, $179. Um, so why is this important? Why is this so important that Ledger has renamed uh, their hardware, what they used to call a hardware wallet, into a signer and changed the name of their native software from Ledger Live to Ledger Wallet? Um, the reason is, is that the term wallet can be misleading and confusing. Um, even within the crypto world, uh, the, the term wallet can, has multiple meanings and uses. So, for example, Ledger Live in conjunction with Ledger, uh, a Ledger signer can be considered a wallet. A lot of people think of Ledger Live, which has now been renamed Ledger Wallet, as a wallet. And indeed, it can be thought of as a wallet. Um, but in addition to that, each account in Ledger Live, which is for each different crypto, can also be considered a wallet because it, it has all the functionality of a crypto wallet. It has a send and receive button and a stake button. So it has that full functionality of a crypto wallet. Um, although the private key of the, those wallets are stored on the device. So, um, so why the name change? Well, the biggest thing is that the confusion that has arisen over the years with ledger devices. A lot of people um, are under the impression that they are vaults where the crypto is stored, that the crypto is stored in the device. And um, they take the device as the end-all be-all of their crypto. Hey, my Bitcoin is in this thing. And Ledger told me it's, it's a vault, so I'm just going to stick this device in my safe for five years. Um, well, the problem with that is that this is not a vault. This is a signer. Um, even the old ones, the Ledger Nano S, so when you move that, when you put that device away for five years, um, it misses updates. So in 2020, I saw a lot of this. People were digging out their, their Ledger Nano S's that they bought in 2017 when the crypto market took off in 2020, only to discover that they were so far behind on their firmware updates that the device had become unusable and they were mad. You know, where's my crypto? Well, the backup phrase is the vault. And it's really an, an easy fix if you have your backup phrase and you know where it is and it's written down correctly. You just get a new device and you restore to it. Um, and that really is what the seed phrase, the seed phrase is the vault, the device is just a tool. So this mindset of people thinking that the, the ledger device itself was a vault um, was leading to all kinds of trouble 
people weren't keeping their devices up to date. They thought that they could just stick them in a safe for five years. Uh, another misconception that I've heard this question many times, people were under the impression that because of the term cold wallet, that when they put their Bitcoin in a cold wallet, it somehow froze the price of the Bitcoin. And I would get that question a lot. Well, if I put my Bitcoin in my cold wallet, will it will the, will the price freeze? Like if Bitcoin is at a hundred thousand, I stick it in my cold wallet, will it stay a hundred thousand? Well, obviously not. I mean, if you take a gold coin and stick it under your bed, uh, does that mean that the the price you paid for that gold is going to stay the same if you take it back to the gold dealer, the coin guy? Of course not. He'll give you market price. You pay market price when you buy it, you stick it under your bed, and then after you pull it out from under your bed and take it back to the coin dealer, he'll give you market price, whether it's higher or lower. The same with crypto. You stick crypto um, in a wallet and uh, it fluctuates its value just like it would if it were on an exchange or anywhere else. Uh, but I want to give you an analogy that might help you understand the concept of a signer in a, a real world example. So in let's imagine you work at a medium sized company in a big building and that's their only location. And uh, there is a CFO, the chief financial officer, and the chief financial officer is the only one authorized to sign paychecks. That, that's kind of a, you know, a contrived example, but we're just going to assume that the CFO is the only person in the company authorized to sign paychecks. And he only signs them when he's in his office. He, he can't, you can't flag him down on the street or see him in a coffee shop or stop him in the hallway to sign the checks, right? He only signs the checks when he's in his office. So uh, the HR or the, um, the payroll department will uh, get these checks ready, much like um, you, might, you might get a transaction ready. They take all the paychecks into the CFO's office and he signs them. So this is exactly what a crypto wallet or a crypto signer does, right? You send the transaction information to the signer and the only thing the signer does is sign the transaction in the office and then the sign checks go out. So in a crypto signer, a cryptographic transaction request goes in, it gets signed, and then the cryptographically signed transaction goes out, right? The, the private key never leaves the device during a crypto transaction. This is like the same as the CFO. So the CFO signs the check uh, and you are un you know it's it's really a simple uh, thing to wrap your mind around that the the monetary system does not exist inside the CFO's office. The dollar he doesn't have stacks of cash in there, right? Cash is not stored in the CFO's office. The only thing the CFO does is sign your check. After he signs his check, it goes back out and then you get your check and then you take it to the bank. And we can think of the bank in crypto terms as the blockchain. So you take your check to the bank and the bank looks at your check and it first thing it says is, is it signed? Well, they look at your check, they see that it's signed, they go to the account information and they say, oh look, this is the authorized signature of the CFO because we have his signature on file. So the bank checks, is the check signed? It also has some attestation. It checks who is the check made out to and does that person have their identification? That would be me or you, so cashing your payroll check. So that's the attestation. So a cryptographic uh, verification or a cryptographic transaction has that as attestation, right? It has all the, the public key. It has all the cryptographic information when it goes to the blockchain. The blockchain, very similar to your bank, says, uh, is this transaction signed? Yes, it was digitally signed by the signer. And um, does it have the proper formatting and attestation, 
right? Does it have the public key of the wallet and all that other stuff? So, um, and once that's done, then you have access to that money. Now, when you think about the way your money works in the banking system, you it's easy to wrap your head around the fact that the money is just moving around uh, in different bank ledgers, right? You take your uh, check and then uh, let's say you cash it and then you go down to the power company and you pay cash to pay your power bill. Well, you could also do that online. So basically what we're looking at is digital uh, movement of money on the bank blockchain, right? Or the banking system. So that's what the ledger that I'm sorry, that's what the blockchain is. It's just a ledger of all of the value of a particular cryptocurrency. So if we look at the Bitcoin blockchain, when I move Bitcoin from my wallet to your wallet, the only thing that happens on the blockchain is uh, value is moved from one part of the blockchain to another part of the blockchain. The black blockchain consists of multiple wallets um, and transactions. And the transactions uh, are immutable. They're saved. So when we move uh, Bitcoin, let's we use Bitcoin as our example, from uh, one wallet to a different wallet, um, we're not actually moving anything out of one wallet to another wallet. We're just authorizing movements on the blockchain of value from one address to another address. So um, that analogy of the CFO as the signer is a good analogy for why we call these devices signers, because that's all they do. You send your transaction information to the device uh, as formatted, cryptographically formatted request. The signer signs it with your authorization, right? You have to tap sign on your device. And then the signed transaction goes out from your wallet onto the blockchain with specific instructions about your Bitcoin address on the blockchain. Are you moving Bitcoin from one place to another? Um, are you sending it back to an exchange? All of those are addresses on the blockchain, movements of value out there on the blockchain. Bitcoin is not stored in the device. The device is a tool to simply sign your transactions and authorize movement of value on the blockchain. Um, I know I won't get totally too far into the blockchain as to how it exactly works, but the analogy of the banking system or the financial system to the blockchain holds, at least in this example. So I hope that that explanation clears up a little bit of why it's a better idea to call uh, a hardware device a signer as opposed to calling it a wallet. The, the term wallet makes you think of that leather thing in your back pocket where you actually stick bills. Um, but even in today's world, you know, you have uh, a, a lot of digital um, signers in your wallet as well. You've got your credit cards. You know, when you use your credit card, you're, you don't think your money is actually in the card. You know that money is being moved around between banks when you make a purchase using your credit card. So uh, think digitally. Um, think about signers as uh, what they are and rather than a vault where, you know, you're going to stick this thing in a safe for five years. Please don't do that. Um, they need to be up to date. Blockchains are not static. Um, the ledger is static and immutable. Uh, once a transaction is recorded, it stays recorded. But the blockchains themselves, the Bitcoin blockchain, um, the Bitcoin software gets constantly updated, new protocols, new address formats, the same with other cryptocurrencies, plus new cryptocurrencies are constantly being added. So your device needs to stay um, cutting edge and up to date. Um, so if you have any questions about anything I said, throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.